Hi everyone, welcome back to Sky Vault Games. My name is Austin, and today is the first part in a four-part series on basic DirectX tutorials. This series is going to lead us up into drawing a cube onto the screen using Direct3D. Uh, DirectX is a, an API that will talk to our graphics card and allow us to create our own rendering engines and our own game engines in C++. So, this four-part series is going to be very basic and very simple, but will lead into other tutorials that we'll make later. So, once you watch this four-part series, you should be able to follow along with our other parts of the series, such as making or drawing textures, uh, lighting objects, uh, loading in FBX or OBJ models, and other such tutorials that we might make in the future. So, the first part to this series is going to be how we're going to be drawing a window to the screen. To draw a window to the screen, we'll be using Win32 API, and this is Windows uh, API that allows us to, of course, draw windows, create windows, and that'll make it for an easy start to our application. This window is something, as you can see, that we can move around, we can minimize, and we can close out of. Very simple, we don't need much more than that to start creating our rendering engine. Uh, the second part to this series is going to allow us to draw a background here, so we can see this very dark blue background. This is what we're going to be starting off with in DirectX, and this is actually the setup for Direct3D that to allow us to start rendering things to the screen. Uh, once we have this foundation, it'll allow us to actually start re uh, rendering 2D and 3D objects. We'll start off with a triangle, and that triangle will allow us to have the basis for any 3D object that we want. So our cube is comprised of different triangles, and so in our fourth video, we're going to le learn how to use those triangles that we learned to draw and to create 3D objects such as this rotating cube. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to be creating our project in Visual Studio 2019. Though creating this project in a different version of Visual Studio should work as well. So we'll go ahead and create a new project. We'll be creating an empty C++ project that will allow us to start the project from scratch. If you don't see that type of project in this window, you can look it up in the search bar. Make sure that it is a C++ empty project. Let's click the next button to start naming the project. I'm going to go ahead and name my project Basic DirectX Tutorial. Though you can name it whatever you want and save it in your folder of choice on your computer. We can now press the Create button to create the project. Now that the project is created, we need to create an entry point for our application. Most of the time in C++, we'll use the main function that the application will know to start with. But in a Windows application, we will actually create what's called a WinMain function. We can right-click on the Source Files folder and click Add to add a new file. We're going to go ahead and create a CPP file and name it WinMain. Click Add to create and add the WinMain.cpp file to our project. This is where we will add the WinMain entry point in our project. We're going to keep this file simple by only having our WinMain function inside it. In order to use Win32 functionality, we will need to go ahead and include the Windows.h library. We are going to create our WinMain function and have its return type as int, which will return the Windows message WM quit for closing the application if it succeeds. We will also need to make sure to add underscore std call as our calling convention, which is used to call Win32 API functions. We will be creating a variable of type hInstance called hInstance. An hInstance is a handle to an instance or module that is a value that the operating system uses to identify the executable file when loaded in memory. This specific variable will be used as a handle to the current instance of our application. This next parameter will also be of type hInstance, but will be a handle to the previous instance of our application. But this variable will always be null in our case since we will only have a single instance of our application open. Our next variable will be of type LPSTR. The type LPSTR specifies a pointer to an array of 8-bit characters. This variable will handle the command line for our application. Our next variable will be of type int that will control how the window will be shown. If we go ahead and try to build our project, we'll get an error. This is because when an empty project is created in Visual Studio, the system is automatically set to use a console. Because of this, the compiler is expecting to find a main entry point, but can't seem to find it. We'll go ahead and change some of our project properties in order to fix our issue. 
We will first make sure to change our C++ language standard to the latest preview of C++. This won't fix the error we have, but will allow us to use the latest functionalities of C++ if we need. We will go ahead and change our subsystem to Windows to fix our issue and tell the application that we want to display a window instead of a console. Now that our properties have changed, we should be able to successfully build our project. If we try to run it, the application will close immediately because we haven't set any code to run. We can create an infinite while loop, which as I know isn't usually advised, but this allows our application to continue running until we decide to stop it. Now if we run it, we can see that we don't have a window showing up, and this is because we still need to implement some more Win32 functionality to create and set our window. We are going to go ahead and create a header file for our window class that we will use to create and implement our window. Make sure to have it called window so that we and the application don't confuse it with the Win32 API Windows header. Now this is where we will create our window class, and we will implement the code necessary to create a window instance in our WinMain function. As we did in WinMain, we will be including the Windows header file to allow us to utilize the Win32 API. We will also be utilizing the optional library in order to use the type optional. This type allows us to indicate that a value may or may not be present. In our case, We'll use this as a return type for our process messages function, which will process button presses and user interaction with the window. We need to have a value that may not be present in case there is a message that doesn't have a value. We will now go ahead and create our window class. Inside of our window class, we of course need our constructor. Our constructor will have three parameters that will dictate certain characteristics about our window, such as the width, height, and name of our window. Along with creating our constructor, we will also need to make sure to create a destructor to delete any values still in memory when the window is closed. We can now create the definition for our process messages function. This will be of type static std optional int. Ints are used to represent different messages processed by the window, such as wm quit in order to close the window. We will now create our window proc function, which allows us to dictate what happens with certain window messages. The function will be static and be of type L result, which is a result of the message processed. We then use the std call calling convention so that it can be called by the Win32 API. There are a few parameters that we will need to include for our window. First, we need a variable of type hwind called hwind. This will be a handle to our window. Next, we need a message of type uint or unsigned int. After that are two variables related to additional information about the message. The first one is of type wparam called wparam, and the other is of type lparam called, of course, lparam. Now we need some member variables that are going to be used to store information about our window that we can use when displaying it. The first is the width of our window. Next we have the height of our window, now a handle to our window, our window name, And finally, a handle to the instance of our window. Now that we have finished creating our header file, we are ready to make a CPP to fill out the code for our functions. Go ahead and create a new source file and name it window.cpp. We are of course first going to include our window header file to gain access to our functions and variables. Let's start by implementing our constructor. We will first populate our width member variable with the width parameter variable passed into our constructor. We will do the same with the height member variable, as well as the h instance member variable. To populate it, we need to use a function called get module handle and pass in a null pointer. This will return a handle to the file used to create the calling process, which is also our .exe file. Inside of our constructor, we will be creating a variable of type wind class called wc. This will be used to register a window with the attributes we set. 
Our first member variable that we will set in our wind class will be the LPFN wind proc. This is a long pointer to the window procedure and will be set to a pointer to our window proc function that we will write later. Next, we need to give the wind class a handle to our instance by using each instance. Now we need to set the name of our wind class, and we can use the window name member variable for this. But when we do this, we seem to get an error. The reason for this is that the types don't match up, and that's because we are using one type of character set when the project is set up to use a different one. So we will need to go into our project settings, and then under configuration properties, and then advance, we'll find the character set setting. Let's change this to use multi-byte character set. And as you can see, this fixes our error. Now that we have all of our required member variables set, we can register the window by passing in a reference to the function register class. Next, we will need to set up the location for our window, and the variables we set will determine where we see the window pop up on the screen. So let's first set up the left side of our window's rectangle. This will be equal to 100, which is just saying that our window should be 100 pixels from the left side of the screen. After that, we can set up the right side of our window, which will be equal to our width plus the location of our left side. This is stating that we will be a width's length away from the left edge of our window. We will now set up the window to be 100 pixels from the top of the screen. And finally, we can set our bottom edge to be equal to our height plus the location of the top edge of the window. Next, we need to actually pass in these dimensions in order to get our window set up correctly. We will also pass in some macros that allow us to set the style of our window, with features such as minimize box. And for now, we will set the assist menu to false, since we don't need that at the top for now. Now we need to set the handle to our window. To do this, we can set it to a function called create window, which we will use to set all of our desired functionality in our window. Let's first send in the name of our window. Add the name passed in through the function. This is what will actually be seen in the window title. Now just like before, we need to set the style for our window. Here we need to set the x and y coordinates of our window's top left corner. For now, we can just set it using the default. Next, let's set the width of our window. To do this, we will subtract the left side of the window from the right. And we will do the same for the height of our window. Next, we need to set up the parent window. But since we don't have one, we can just set it to null pointer. There is also a variable to the menu that we will set to null pointer, since we don't need to worry about that. Here, we will add our h instance variable. And lastly, we can just add in the term this to use for our window messages. Now we can finally use our handle to our window to pass it in and prepare to show it. Now we are done with the constructor and can move on to the destructor. Since we registered our window class, we will also need to unregister it when we are done. For this, we just need to pass in the name of our window and the handle to our window instance. After that, we can destroy the window using the handle to it. Let's go ahead and start setting up our process messages function. We'll start by setting the return type to our SVD optional int. We need to now create an MSG variable. This is where the message that the window receives will be stored. Next, we need to create a while loop so that the window can continue processing a message as it is being received. Inside the while loop condition, we will be using the peak message function, which is a Win32 function that can check for a message, return whether there is a message, and store that message into our MSG variable. 
Next, we need to see if our message is a quit message. We will return the w param of our message if it is. We will now need to use the Windows function translate messages in order to translate our virtual key message into a character message. We then need to dispatch the message to a window receiver, and then it will be retrieved using the get message function. Now we just need to return nothing if there isn't a message being seen. This is why we needed to use optional as our return type. We can now implement our final function for this class, which is the window proc function. Don't forget to add all of our necessary parameters. We will now create a switch statement to handle our different message cases. For now, we'll only check for one type of message, though there are plenty of types of messages we can lock out for. In this case, we want to watch out for the WM destroy message, which lets us know that the user is pressing the X button in the window to close it. So we can go ahead now and post our quit message as zero to show that our application quit successfully. We could use any number we want here, but zero is standard. Let's make sure to also return zero if we get this message. Finally, we need Windows to process any other messages using the standard Windows proc, since our application won't be handling anything else. Now that we are finished setting up our Windows class, we will now need to include our window header in WinMain. Before that, we have to stop including the windows.h file, since we are already including it in our own window header. Now we can go ahead and include our header. In order to actually set up our window to render, we need to create an instance of it. So let's go ahead and set our window size. You can set it to what you want, but I'm going to set mine to 1280 by 720. Feel free to also name your window whatever you want. Now we just need to actually check and return our message code so that the program ends when we get the quit message. Let's go ahead and build so that we can check for errors. Looks like everything is working well. We can move around the window, minimize it, and even close it. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to press the like button. And if you want to see more videos in the series and be updated for when they come out, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell.